for the thrilling adventures of Lightning Jim. Marshal Moran reporting, Sheriff, to take your prisoner to Danute Kit. Back to federal prison. Stand trial for robbing a well, well I reckon I know what he's going back to stand trial for. I reckon everybody in the state knows the history of the totem bandits. There ain't nothing they haven't done. Here's the papers authorizing the transfer. Well, whoever hung the moniker granted on you is a good judge of human nature. Say, don't you ever smile? I'm here to effect the transfer of a prisoner wanted by the federal government. Don't you even want to know anything about this prisoner? What do you mean, Sheriff? Well, I'm plumb sorry we caught him. There ain't another member of that owl hooter's gang who doesn't deserve to be hung seven times over and then boiled in owl for good measure. I'm in a hurry, Sheriff. There's a long ride ahead of me. What I'm trying to tell you is that this prisoner of mine's just a kid. Can't be a day more than 18. This must have been his first job. He ain't bad. You can tell that by looking at him. According to the information furnished the Attorney General, your prisoner was wounded at the time the totem band held up the Wells Fargo Express. Yeah, that's right enough. The rest of the coyotes got away, but this poor kid was left behind. Keep your sympathy to yourself. The age of the prisoner is no excuse for his offense. Under the law... Keep your law to yourself, Granite Moran. Come on, if you want your prisoners to all fired quick... Well, I guess... There he is, Marshal. A dangerous-looking criminal, ain't he? Yeah, reckon you'll need any help getting him back to Austin? What? Oh, well, here's where I get a change of scenery. You want to put the handcuffs on me, Marshal? No, nah, there ain't no need of doing that, Marshal. His right arm shot back. Well, I thought you was in a hurry to get started back. What you waiting for? Come on out, Sinute. If that's what you call yourself. Yeah, you know, that's me. It's a new kid. Well, so long, sir. Thanks for everything. Gosh, you've been swell to me. Well, I'm sorry about this, lad. Too bad you had to get in with the wrong outfit. Hurry up there. There's a long trail ahead of you, and the government don't like to be kept waiting. <laughs> I don't understand this, Attorney General. What happened to Granite Moran and his prisoner? If I knew that, I wouldn't have to send for you, Lightning. They just disappeared. Well, then maybe you know where they disappeared from. We don't even know that, Whitey. Moran went to White Sulphur. The sheriff there turned the Chinook kid over to him. The two left immediately. Horse back, of course. And they haven't been seen since. That's the really you checked all the towns along the way. Sure. They weren't seen in any of them. Uh, you think maybe King Thornton came back to rescue the Chinook kid? Well, I can't figure King Totem putting his neck in danger for any of his men. But that might have happened. Granite Moran. Hmm. A man they say is too hard to let even a diamond scratch him. No enlightening? Well, not intimate. No his record, of course. Fifteen years he's worked as a marshal. Well, reckon they might make anybody sort of... Sort of... Well, sort of... <laughs> I know what you're trying to say, Lightning. That Granite Moran doesn't have a heart. That he never gives a man a break. That all he lives by and for is the law, letter by letter. No, oh, I've heard that nobody ain't never even seen him smile. Maybe I don't approve of his utter heartlessness, but he's never fallen down on an assignment yet. And if anything's happened to him, it won't have been his fault. I reckon I understand you. If he's alive, he may be needing help. 
If you ain't alive, in that case, the United States government will start paying off its debt to Moran. <laughs> The history of the United States Marshals of the Old West is a thrilling one. They faced every danger, took every risk incident to the performance of their duty, received small wages, and were usually killed in service. But they were not forgotten. The United States government has not forgotten or will ever forget the debt which it owes to the men who so courageously enlisted for duty. And then, as now, the murder of a government employee unleashed the hounds of the law, hounds which never gave up a cent, never stopped until the criminal was caught and punished to the full extent of the law. So Lightning Jim and Whitey ride back over the trail to White Sulphur, seeking for some trace, some faint clue, which will enable them to find Granite Moran, United States Marshal, who mysteriously disappeared while bringing a prisoner back to stand trial at Austin. Who'd be interested like in asking questions and looking for signs of a fresh theory? Yeah, not a trace. Whitey, I'm dead level certain Moran never got farther north than this. Man six feet tall with a head of bushy white hair, one eyebrow wiped out by a bullet wound. He'd have been noticed, all right. But he's almost the right sort of all I've been. Mean, that's only about five miles from here. Whitey, look over there. Wolf's under. Wolf city, boy. Oh, well, you mean a little Mexican kid. Oh, I see him. Look, but... look what's pinned on the front of his shirt. Oh, damn it, Lightning. It's a Marshal's badge. Yeah, it's a Marshal's badge, all right. Muchacho, aquí, haz a favor. Come on over here, youngster. What do you, what do you want? I do nothing wrong. I, I good boy. <laughs> I know you're a good boy. I just want to ask you some questions, that's all. You don't want to hurt you. Dios, what a horse. Take a bayou. Never, never have I ever seen such a horse. So big, so black. <laughs> well, thunder won't hurt you either. What's your name, Muchacho? Felipe. Felipe Gonzalez. Well, Felipe, where'd you get such a beautiful badge? I, I did no wrong. I did not steal. It was in the ground. It would get rusty in the ground. In the ground. Like that, that means that Moran was stealing. There must be that. Well, Felipe, how'd you come to find it in the ground? Was you just digging around? No. <laughs> I saw the man who put it there. He'd dig a hole and put a shiny something in and put the dirt back on top. Then he'd go away. I wait a while. When he no come back, I dig it up. I see. When did you see the man bury this bag? Ah, I know that too. I went to church that day. It was then that I saw him. Eight years ago. But like he is years ago, what could be more or less like so? Yeah, buddy. Reckon it was the end of the trail for him. Right about here. Felipe. Si, senor. You sure there wasn't anything else buried at the same place? Nothing, senor. I look good. But this is shiny thing was all. Would you know the man again? The man who did the digging? He, a tall man he was, and straight, with white hair. White hair? Yes. He, he had much hair, all white, and one eyebrow was not there at all. What? Only a crooked scar. But lightning that must be ran himself. I don't understand now, Mr. Why should Moran bury a small surprise? Well, I don't know myself, buddy. It don't make sense. Felipe? You say yours? Uh, I'd like to buy that bag from you. How about five dollars? Cinco pesos, would you tell? Cinco pesos? Mm -hmm. Madre de Dios, I've never seen so much money. It's you, senor. It's all yours. I tell you, Lightning, I think and I think uh, until my head hurts, but I can't find the man. Me neither, buddy. Moran buried his badge, all right. Felipe described him from head to foot. No, oh, but where was the place in there? And why wouldn't the ram bury a small success? Well, I reckon when we talk to the sheriff here in White Sulphur, we might know a little more about it. The lightning, look at those people in the street. They have something to matter. Yeah, they run around like jackrabbits. Come on. Well, from the oh, oh, there's sheriff over there. Sure. Sheriff, what's happened? Those dang murdered and totem bandits snuck up the bank, killed the cashier, got away before we knew what was up. We're just organizing a party. Sure, it was a totem gang? Sure, I've seen pictures of all of them. Me totem wasn't in the bunch, and they had a new fellow. No description on him? No. No. But hey, you know what? He sure looked like Granite Moran. I just swore it with him. Only it couldn't have been. You mean the new man in the band looked like Martha Moran? Yes, fitting image of him. Killed the hair. Couldn't see his eyebrows. He had his hat pulled down. Sheriff, yes, there's something funny around here. Yes, look at this. And what is it? What's funny about it? I found it sticking up in the bank. And it hadn't been there before to hold up. And where'd you find it? On the back of the door. Stuck there with a pin. 
That's just a train schedule. Timetable. It don't mean nothing. Let me see that, Jeff. Sure, here it is. Whitey? Timetable for the Ozark Texas Railroad. Got pencil marks on it. Gee, what you got for new mind? There's a circle drawn around the words Red Spring. And in the margin is written Mark 10th. Sure, that's tomorrow. Uh, you can get me in something. Red Spring is a place where the train stops to take on water, Whitey. About 25 miles from here. It is just about right for a train holdup. But you don't know like this. I got a hunch, Whitey. We're going to be on that ONT train tomorrow, and it stops at Red Spring. Come on, Thunder. <laughs> This may be just a wild idea, mine boys, but <laughs> you railroad men were sure nice about joining me and Whitey. Me and Larry here was glad for the chance. Yes, Marshal. Larry, Marshal. Stephen and me's been going around in circles trying to get some track of these train robbers. Yeah, you've been going around in circles, man. I think yesterday I ain't even stopped burning. Uh, I ain't even got myself a good grip yet. <laughs> <laughs> Reckon I ain't far ahead of you, Whitey. Uh, uh, I still don't know where Moran fits into this picture, but... I got a hunch. Yesterday, huh? when I saw that railroad timetable, I felt it. Well, well we're just about stopping. Careful now. Don't show yourself. Oh. Hello. If any shooting starts, give it to him. No, but I think what this Moran should be. You mean someone who looks like Moran. This may just be a trap, Wes. Well, we'll soon know. Oh, you were right, Nathan. Get that door open. There won't be a suspect of nothing from a fake car. Now, let him have it. Your hunch was right, Marshal. You saved this train all right. They sure left in a hurry. What if that was Moran? That was Moran, I tell you. He sat fell off just when he wheeled his horse to make his getaway. Grand Nick Moran riding the king caught him by lightning that can be. But it was. The United States Marshal throwing his badge away, riding with a bunch of scouts and Gila monsters. Why did Moran's disgrace in the service? But lightning, I tell you, a man that is rested, he'll he'll why lightning he hates the truth givers and he hates poison. Oh, I tell you, I can't think anymore. I'm all tossed out. Here comes Steve, running like he found something. Marshal! What is it? Marshal! Say, one Jasper's dead, all right. But I found this hat, and there's a map inside it. Yeah, give it to me. Yeah. What is it? <clears throat> Come here. Go on, map, if you like it. Get the map, all right. In Mexico. Right across the river from White Sulphur. Oh, I see. There's Consonagia. And that's the first town as we get across the river. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But here, look at this temple now. A circle drawn around this spot. But there ain't any town there. Yeah, but they ain't far from Conchonet, you know. Yeah, about ten miles, I imagine. Look here, Whitey. Pencil writing's sort of blurred, but... S-E-N-T. Whitey, that's Spencer. Spencer? Yeah, this must be the hideout of the totem gang. Oh, Lightning, you do the thinking for me. My brain is all scrambled up. That timetable in the bank was on the level. It was off to this train hold up. That's right, that's it. Well, I'm going to follow my hunches. This map tells us where King Totem hangs out. It's okay. even got the spot mark where we've got to watch out for the man who guards the trail. Well, what do you figure on doing, Mark? Why didn't you going over the river and follow this map, Larry? What? Mm-hmm. You two are going to tackle this gang all alone? Well, it might be a trap. You can't be sure. You can't go charging I ain't the... sure nothing. I can't figure out what kind of a game Rand playing. But I'm declaring myself in. Are you with me, Whitey? Lightning, I'll do anything. I'll go any place, do anything. Yes, as long as I don't have to figure nothing out. I tell you, I wasn't built for brains first. I think I'm more of an action type. What will be the outcome of Lightning Jim's and Whitey's trip across the river searching for the totem bandits? And just what part is Granite Moran playing in this puzzle? Part two of the Meadow Gold Roundup follows immediately.
And now for part two of the adventures of Lightning Jim. The following day, Lightning and Whitey have just dismounted from their horses about eight miles from Conchenegra. We'll go on from here on foot. Reckon the sentry station about a mile from here. The map's on the level. Well, Lightning, we can't be sure about that. No, we just got to take a chance. It's just about dark when we get there. If we can take them by surprise, well, from there on, we'll have to let the plans make themselves. Come on, let's get started. All right, Lightning. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm on my way. While in a ranch house about a mile and a half away, King Totem and five of his bandits, including a man named Moran, are talking. We got about $4,000 out of the bank holdup. If that train job had worked out all right, we'd really have something to celebrate. Hello, <laughs> King. Can't you see they ain't got nothing to celebrate tonight, I reckon? He got plugged square through the head. You're right there, killer. And he was a good man. And I wonder how them critters got tipped off. Yeah. If I could figure that out. This may not have been a tip off, King. There may be men on all the trains now. Maybe we better not include trains in our work for a some time. Since when have you been making plans for this outfit, Max? Oh, I'm making no plans. But I offer the suggestion. I'll keep your trap shut into your ass. You're awful quiet tonight, Moran. Maybe you know something about that train affair. Me? What would I know? I reckon I came as near getting shot as you did, King. Well, I still aim to watch you, Moran. And don't forget that. You did all right on the bank job. You did your part at Red Springs. But I'd still like to know a lot more about your joining up with us. I told you all that. I just got tired working for the government. Walking into bullets and knives for a measly 50 a month. Decided I wanted some real money for a change. Oh, he's all right, King. We all had our eyes on him. I don't see how he could have given nobody a tip off. Maybe not. I ain't accusing him. But Moran. I'm listening. If I find out that you have been working against us, I'll kill you that very minute. You got that straight? Ain't but one way to get it, King. Yes, I savvy, all right. Yeah, just be sure you do. Curly. Yeah, boss, what do you want? Better go out and relieve Al. You'll stand guard until morning. Red will take your place then. Why no? Uh-huh. Well, I'm glad I am. I ain't on for tonight. You're going to be in for a wedding, Curly. <laughs> you better take some tonic along in case you get cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the tonic right with me, killer. <laughs> it's a delicate like a taste of regular. Well, Moran, I got a couple more bottles and get the card. Reckon we'll make a night of it. <laughs> Sure, it's a beautiful night. When I drink such a full of water, I feel like I'm living. I tell you, I never saw so much water come down so quick. Yeah, this rain came up in a hurry, all right. Wait. What is it? Look right up yonder beside that big rock. You want see? No, oh, I feel like the water. Oh, yes, yeah. we're standing right up there with Jackson. Yeah. Well, from here on, we've got to call for it. I hope he goes here. Here, here, you let my boots get there, you know. But here, you let my stomach is going to be hurt. Quiet, you get going. Oh, uh, darn weather. Uh, for two cents, I'd go back and help him to watch his own self. Uh, uh, at least a fellow can leave, have a drink. I'm having one right now. Cut it, buddy. Cut it, Captain. Oh, I'm oh. oh. up now, quick. Oh, oh, he's too all right. Uh, uh, this boy still must be still like me. The fellow was taking a drink. Uh, he didn't even see the picture. No. No, all we have to do is get the rest of them, including Moran. Got a lot of questions I want to ask that hombre. <laughs> Cards and straight and plenty. 
Oh, but mine. Yeah, you sure that's Moran, though. Dead sure. Sam, it's Moran playing part of a king totem. Hmm. Well, that would be not the big one, If we could only get him outside, we'd have him even break that way. Walking in on him, he ain't going to be easy. You like me? I got me an idea. What is it, Wendy? You got the fire going in the fire. Yeah. Right? No, if I could get up on the roof. What's that in your mind, Wally? Uh, then I could throw some court tickets down the chimney. You'd start going off like fire just as soon as they get hot. Yeah? Well, uh, uh, I reckon some of them poor chaps would come running out of that. You've got to roll with your brain, Wally. We can just get up there without making any noise. Oh, well, I can try. You better watch the door. You think there's somebody comes out to you. Yeah, but as soon as you drop them cartridges down the chimney, better slide off the roof. Because things will start happening fast. Uh, hello, Mr. Moran. Hello, Mr. Moran. Oh, hello, Mr. Moran. Hello, Mr. Moran. Where's that bottle, mate? You've been hogging it all evening. No, I do not like being called the hog the killer. No? <laughs> but for a jewel, I pass the bottle. <laughs> yeah, I reckon you don't want to pull guns with me, Meg. You ain't in my class. No, I think I have to kill you at some time. Yeah. Maybe I do it now. You talk too much. Why do you talk? Shut about? up, both of you. You want to kill each other, go outside to do it. Hmm. I'll wait till tomorrow, King. I don't want to get wet. <laughs> Tomorrow at the night, it makes no difference to make for a bomb. I kill you just as dead no matter what time. Yeah. It you don't talk much, do you, Moran? No. And you don't drink either? No. Maybe you're too good to drink with it. Maybe you're particular about who you drink with. Is that it? You're doing the talking. Maybe I'll have to make you drink with it. What's eating on you, King? Can't a man stay sober if he wants to? In my bunch, I give orders. I don't have room here for anybody who won't, won't take them. Hey, what's that? What's them talking? Well, I'm not staying here to be shot in a trap. Don't open that door. Stay here and get shot, then. I'm going down fighting. You fool! Come back! Hey, you've done this, your ass. You won't lift the back about it. Reach for the sky, King. They're under arrest. Not while I've got a gun, I won't. Oh, sure, I won't. You asked for it, King. Oh. I got the darn law back, partner first. Oh. Yeah, Whitey, you. I got the men in the shoulder. What's the other stop there? They ain't going to never bother nobody no more. Is that lightning him? Moran, you're alive. Good man. But not for long. I'm going fast. Lightning. Well, it's Jim Moran. Ask it to you. I'll get some water. Oh, uh, don't bother. I'm done for, and I'm glad. So I'm glad to talk, uh, Moran. Get up that sheet over there, buddy, and we'll get the blood stopped. Uh, you know, listen, I've got to talk. I've got to tell you. I'm not in the service any longer. What do you mean? You've been working to trap these buzzers, haven't you? Yeah. Listen, uh, that prisoner I was sent to bring back, I didn't see no kid, was my son. Your son? Yeah. I hadn't seen him for a couple of years. King here got him in the gang. He was just a kid. Yeah, so that Devil King got all this men, and then he wouldn't let them fit. I've lived by the law. Always done what I thought the law said. But I couldn't turn my own son in. I couldn't. I understand, ma'am. You let him get away. I sent him away. He's a good kid, and, and I won't tell you where he is. Reckon we ain't interested in that. Then I, I took off my badge. I couldn't wear it no more. After letting a prisoner get away. Then you could have fixed up a story or uh, something. But I'd have always known myself that I let the law down. Granite Moran. Granite to the last. I found out. Where this hideout was, from the boy. Then I come here, and I spun him a story about wanting to make some money. You left that note for us at the bank hold up, so as we could save the train. I hoped somebody would find it and figure it out. Then at the train hold up, I knocked my own hat off, knowing somebody would find it. It was good work, Moran, and took nerve. More nerve than I've got. I'm glad you're here, Lightning. 
again. Look up. And that's what I wanted. I've got something for you here, Moran. Your badge. My, my badge? Yeah. A match for it, all your bury. And you don't look natural without it. Yeah. My badge. You're pinning it back on me. You're still in the service, Moran. My badge. Oh, thank you, Lightning. Now I can die as a lawman should die. Lightning, he's dead. Yeah, buddy. Marshal Moran, he's dead. Buddy, we don't know nothing about this new kid being the son of Moran. Remember that. No, we don't know nothing about the lightning. As far as we know, the Chinook kid is dead. That's right. The Chinook kid is dead. And Marshal Moran died in the discharge of his duty, bringing in the totem band. No, and he died smiling. The man who, who never smiled, he is smiling now. And so ends another experience in the lives of those two famous marshals of the Old West, Lightning Jim Whipple and his deputy, Whitey Larson. Mm-hmm.